So how do you think we're going to do this project? Oh, man, I don't know. It's been stressing me out for a long time. I know, right? I mean, a play analysis? What is that? Can I spell analysis? Uh-huh. I can't spell analysis. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. That is horrible. It happens to the best of us. Um. <laughs> Hi. <How you> doing? <laughs> what? 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 Let's do this over. Okay, okay. hold on. And uh, we're here today to present to you our play called How I Learned to Drive. Ooh, amazing. I know. You're going to love it. It's great. So now we're going to talk about our playwright, whose name is Paula Vogel. Okay, Sahara, let me tell you about Miss Vogel. Okay. Paula Ann Vogel was born in Washington, D.C. in November 1965 to Phyllis and Don Vogel. She graduated from Cornell University, the university, the Catholic University of America, and she also attended Friermeyer College, not university. She is best known for her Pulitzer Prize winning. Woo, Pulitzer Prize. The Pulitzer Prize winning play, How I Learned to Drive. Ooh, we're doing that one. We are, in 1997, uh, which examines uh, the effects of, of child abuse and Get this incest. Oh my God. On to her personal life. She had two brothers, Carl and Mark, who both died died of AIDS. However, her father created the Carl Vogel Center, which helps anyone living with HIV AIDS. Sahar, hmm? this woman is married. Is married? This woman is married. Okay, that's cool. This woman is married. To another woman. Oh. Oh. Oh, I get it. She's married to Brown University professor and author Anne Fosto. And they were married in Massachusetts. In now plot structure. And she is also the professor of creative writing at Brown University. Wow. Where she directs the MFA playwriting program. All right, play ready. How I Learned to Drive has an episodic plot structure. Episodic is a series of events or chapters that link characters together through place or time. In this play, the characters are linked together through time because you have flashbacks throughout the play that explain what is going on, basically. And it's kind of fun because, you know, you get to see different things of different time periods. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Yeah. And, you know, we see how the characters go. In each, like, chapter or episode, so to say, you see the characters progress toward what they're trying to convey or basically the message they're trying to get across to you. So, as we go on, we will examine what they were trying to do. Started. Our central concept statement is Love Bites, a shark situation. The reason we chose our central concept statement is because of our characters. They are a very dynamic and interesting bunch. Which means the Greek chorus can play more than one character. For example, the grandmother can also play Aunt Mary, which she does in this play. A little bit in our play is the main focus, the protagonist, so to speak. And she is our foil. She is the person who we go with from beginning to end. At first, she starts off as a young woman, kind of just introducing herself. And then as she goes on, she begins to grow, examining her life through a series of flashbacks, which is where we get our episodic point of view from. Hello. She starts off... As a young woman, flashing back to her young girl days, then leading up to her college days, and eventually we see her as once again a young woman, where she has gathered 
all new information and insight about life. Now, Uncle Peck, he's a very distinguished rich man. He's very complicated. He's a veteran in the military. Not to mention he's married. He's married to Aunt Mary. Him and Little Bit vibe on many levels. Uh, they vibe on many levels, literally. He knows how she's feeling and what she's feeling like. Hey, 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 now. You don't want to reveal too much of the story. Well, I'm just saying. Oh, but you guys were supposed to read it, huh? 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 The mother, the grandmother, the waiter, and the grandfather in this play, or our Greek chorus. To make a modern spin out of things, we uh switched it over, so to say. Now on to the mother in our play. The mother is kind of like a confidant or a foil because she, of course, is another obstacle in the way of poor little little bit. She just wants to be a woman and, of course, her mother wants to tell her how without giving her too much advice like her mother gave her. Did I just confuse you? Because I just confused... Did I, did I confuse you? Because I just confused myself. Okay, so let's try this again. Her mother is a foil or a confidant, who's basically an obstacle to Little Bit. She tries to control Little Bit's life and kind of lead her in the right direction at the same time. And we all know how mothers can be. She is the typical overpowering overpowering, I'm going to keep saying it like that, and kind of leading, she's the typical mother, leading a little bit in the direction that little bit doesn't want to go. So, just like any other child, she rebels against her mother, does her own thing, while her mother faces her own adversities. Little Bit's grandfather, a.k.a. Big Papa, for his Big Papa. The father of his mother and Aunt Mary is a crude, offensive man who expects to be waited on by his wife, hand and foot. He is proud of the fact that he took his wife at the age of 14 against his family's wishes. His wife describes him as a big bull, wanting sex all the time. I mean all the time. Lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Um... Uh, Every morning, every evening, even coming home at lunch for him. Early in the play, he jokes about little bits, um, little bits growing, her breasts growing a little bit bigger. And she, throughout the years, he makes derogatory comments about why is she going to college? Because she already has all the credentials on her chest. Can Shakespeare teach you how to lay down and take it? Now, the waiter, we want him to be a funny character, and I mean funny character. But we're going to talk about casting a little later. He's the only character who interacts with uh, the couple, Little Bit and Uncle Peck. Yes, the couple. He is very skeptical about giving giving a 16-year-old Little Bit a, a drink at the bar. But he does it anyway, so he can get a big tip. Money, 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 money. Next thing we're going to talk about is costumes. All right, we're going to get a little snazzy here. Um, and we're going to talk about how our costumes tie into our central concept statement. Yeah. Now we vision Uncle Peck in a light blue blazer, some light blue jeans, and some light, no, too much blue. Uh, we want... We want the blazer to have a nice collar so you can, you know, pop it like so. Yeah, I know. Ladies, that's nice, huh? Jerome. Okay, so the sharp edges are a metaphor for the shark's teeth. And we're going to add a nice little accessory right here. He's going to have a necklace. We get it. A shark's tooth. <laughs> Yeah. And as for a little bit, we're going to have her in a white button-up. And over time, 
The way she wears it shows the maturity and how old she is. The, the pants are going to be peach, and the metaphor for her outfit here is a more innocent fish. Uh, goldfish, if you will. Hello. Hello, Gavin. Now we want to talk about the Greek chorus. The mother would wear more of a 70s outfit when the play was actually written. So that would be curvaceous bell bottoms with a tucked in blouse with loud prints on it. But her colors are basically going to be uh, more so grays and, and blue hues because she's the, she's the confident character. So we want to make sure that she has like a tie-in to the shark, so if you will, because it's one big shark attacking a little bit. Or are they? Hmm. Now, the grandmother, who will also play Aunt Mary, will wear a floral dress. And when she switches to the character Aunt Mary, she can simply pull on overalls over her floral dress to be more of a 70s kind of skirt type thing. And of course, you'll see pictures. And then, for the grandfather, he will wear blue jean pants and a blue jean button-up top to kind of show his old-fashioned kind of ways and thinking. You know, like the old lumberjacks back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and then the waiter, we want him to wear standard black pants and button-up shirt because he really has nothing to do with it, but he's just a funny aside character. All right, so that's pretty much it for costume. Bam! Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a black Cadillac sliding in and off with the shark on the hood. We're going to have signs everywhere. Bam, bam, bam. If they're relevant to the time, then why not? Just have them there. Bam, 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 bam. We're going to have caution, yield, stop, go. We're going to have no drinking, Buckle your mother-loving seatbelt and watch for those mother-loving kids crossing the street. <laughs> did he? Did he? He just... Did you? Yes. Oh, man, now I'm going to have to step my game up. Okay. 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 Continue. So, hey, Jerome. What's up? Don't you think they would want to know why the car is sliding upstage and then downstage center? Well, yes, they would. All right. So we're going to explain to you guys. So our reasoning is because the car will be the main focal point, you know? It's the thing they're generally in most of the time. So at first, it'll be upstage center, and the spotlight will be focused on it. And that's where Little Bit would do most of her talking. Then, as the ship scene shifts, the car will slide back. And then what happens? Well, when the scene changes, there will be a table upstage right. The table represents the restaurant scene and the kitchen scene. Uh, the lights will also shift upstage right. And? Oh, then the lights will shift to the hotel scene at the end of the play, where our last scene takes place. And there will basically be a nice little hotel room kind of set up. And that's it for scenery. And for lights. And music. Oh, is up next. Now music. Yeah, that's right. Now for music. Now, for music, we're going to have a wide range of artists. We're going to have Reese Palmer, a country singer, to Christine Aguilera, who made it new for her generation. Then we're going to have Kelly Clarkson, Colby Callard. We're going to have Pretty Ricky. You know, we're going to have some songs from Evan Essence, Green Day, and American Idiot. You know, 21 Guns. So, the reason we have all these different artists is to kind of symbolize the characters a little bit within the music. So, for example, 
21 Guns by American Idiot and Green Day is going to symbolize, you know, Peck's breakdown as he's washing the dishes and Little Bit comes in. That's just an example. Or Reese Palmer's song about empowering women. Or Christine Aguilera's song about trying to find herself in independence, you know. So you remember when we said we were going to come back to casting? Yep. It's that time. So, what are we going to do? I don't know. You want famous people? Uh, tired of famous people. Yeah, me too. What about people from our school? Now we're cooking. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so where from? There's like a wide range of choices. How about class? Class is good. Class is good. So... Let's see. Who's going to be a little bit? Emily. Emily. I've been thinking about that for a while. Emily should be a little bit. Yes. Emily, you are casted as the role of little bit. Okay. Uncle Peck? Well, that's a tough one. Hmm. You should have a beard. Mm -hmm. <gasps> James. A mustache. No, a mustache. Sorry. Not a beard. So, James? James. Your Uncle Peck. All right. Um... Grandpa, Big Papa. Big Daddy. Let's do uh, Carlos. Carlos, you're Big Daddy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. What about the grandma slash aunt? Oh, the grandma slash aunt. You know what? Someone has to be mature and flexible, you know? That should be... Natalie. Natalie. Natalie, you're casting. Let's see. Who's left? Let's see here. The waiter. Well, that's tough because we want him to be kind of funny. I got somebody. You do? I know somebody. Who? I really, this guy, he's going to be perfect for it. He's going to be perfect? Taylor, you're going to be the waiter. That is a great idea. Taylor, you are casting. So I guess that's our cast for um how to how I learned to drive. Yeah. Alright. So I I think we're done. We're through? Yeah, that's we it? Yeah. We hit plot structure. We hit our central concept statement. We hit information about our playwright. We had information about our scene, our costumes. Our lighting. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. Our music. Our what else was there? We went over so many things. Everything's covered. Everything's covered. Everything. Everything. We can't think of anything else. Nothing else is off my brain. Alright. So I guess it's time for questions. Any questions, man? Any questions? Any questions? No, Any questions? no, no. Okay, bye. Good. <laughs> so you remember when we said we were gonna come back to casting? Yep. It's that time. So what are we going to do? I don't know. You want famous people? Uh, tired of famous people. Yeah, me too. What about people from our school? Now we're cooking. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so where from? There's like a wide range of choices. How about class? Class is good. Class is good. So. Let's see. Who's going to be a little bit? Emily. Emily. I've been thinking about that for a while. Emily should be Little Bit. Yes. Emily, you are casted as the role of Little Bit. Okay. Uncle Peck? Well, that's a tough one. Hmm. You should have a beard. Mm -hmm. <gasps> James. A mustache. No, a mustache. Sorry. Not a beard. So, James? James. You're Uncle Peck. All right. Um. Grandpa. Big Papa. Big Daddy. Let's do uh, Carlos. Carlos, you're Big Daddy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. What about the grandma slash aunt? Oh, the grandma slash aunt. You know what? Someone has to be mature and flexible, you know? That should be Natalie. Natalie, Natalie you're casting. Let's see. Who's left? Let's see here. The waiter. 
<gasps> well, that's tough because we want him to be kind of funny. Hmm. I got somebody. You do? I know somebody. Who? I really, this guy, he's going to be perfect for it. He's going to be perfect? Taylor, you're going to be the waiter. That is a great idea. Taylor, you are casted. So I guess that's our cast for um how to how I learned to drive. Yeah. All right. So I I think we're done. With her? Yeah, that's we it? Yeah. We hit plot structure. We hit our central concept statement. We hit information about our playwright. We had information about our scene, our costumes, our lighting. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. Our music. Or what else was there? We went over so many things. Everything's covered. Everything's covered. Everything. Everything. We can't think of anything else. Nothing else is off my brain. All right. So I guess it's time for questions. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? No, Any questions? no, no. Okay, bye. Good. <laughs>